Hi everyone. So today we have uh, a really interesting problem, and we're going to be discussing about factorization techniques. Now, factorization techniques is one of the most important elementary concepts when it comes to problem solving, well, because it can be really used anywhere. It can be used in number theory, algebra, really anywhere. It can like you can never know what shape or form it may take in the exam. So it's really important to know some standard factorization results, but also important to know that maybe some there are some non-standard factorization results that are good to know. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So this is a question from the Vietnamese Math Olympiad in 2022, the VMO. And um, in this video, we're going to be looking at factorization techniques uh, and a very neat factorization result. So one of the things that I really like about solving these problems is, you know, you come across certain problems and, you know, in solving them, you form certain kind of, let's say, uh, results. Right? And these results that you form, certain like stand, certain observations that you make or certain like results that you form that can be applied everywhere in any problem, they're very important to know. And the more you practice problems, the more such results, the more such theorems, the more such uh, observations you'll come across. And it's really important to note them. It's really important to kind of like uh, have, have them in the back of your mind because you never know in what problem they might be needed, right? And after that, we have certain book sessions for National Olympians and at the end, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so let uh, the question says that let A, B, C are integers such so that A plus B plus C is 20, 22, 1 by A plus 1 by B plus 1 by C is 1 by 20, 22, and they're asking us to find the value of this quantity. So, okay, they have given us a plus b plus c is equal to 2022, which is equal to 1 by a plus 1 by b plus 1 by c. So, essentially, a plus b plus c is equal to 1 by a plus 1 by b plus 1 by c. Okay, sorry, 1 by a plus b plus c, right? Because uh, this would be this. Sorry about that. Because, um, yeah, a plus b plus c is 2022, and 1 by a plus 1 by b plus 1 by c is 1 by 2022. Right, so it would be something like this. Okay, so let's see how we can proceed. So 1 by a uh, plus b plus c is equal to 1 by a plus 1 by b plus 1 by c. Right, this is what is going to us. Now, if I just bring this 1 by a to this side, I'll get 1 by a plus b plus c minus 1 by a is equal to 1 by b plus 1 by c. Okay, that's great. And um, if I just take the LCM in the denominator, I'll get a times a plus b plus c. And the numerator, I'll get a minus a plus b plus c, right? And over here, I'll get b plus c divided by bc. Now, this is actually great because uh, when you simplify this, the a and a gets cancelled out, so it remains negative of b plus c divided by a times a plus b plus c, which is equal to b plus c divided by bc. And after this, I can just take this uh, to the right hand side so that everything becomes positive. So, b plus c divided by bc plus b plus c divided by a times a plus b plus c is equal to zero. Great. So if I just take b plus c as common, I'll get 1 by a times a plus b plus c plus 1 by bc is equal to 0. Okay. So b plus c, here I'll get abc times a plus b plus c. And over in the num numerator, I'll get um, bc plus a times a plus b plus c is equal to 0. Now you can see that all of these are non-zero quantities, so I can just uh, ignore them in the denominator. So just multiply uh, that quantity on both sides. So we'll be left with b plus c times b c plus a times a plus b plus c is equal to zero. So yeah, know that we can only do this because this is non-zero, right? A plus b plus c is 22, and a, b, and c are obviously natural numbers. So yeah. Now that is done. Now that this is done. Now how do we proceed after this? Well, uh, you see, if we can somehow manage to factorize this, it would be good. Now, from here there, you know, what might come across your mind is just take two cases, right? Case one where b plus c is equal to zero and case two where this other quantity is zero. But if you actually persevere a little bit longer, you actually realize that uh, there exists a neat factorization for this as well. You know, there exists a very neat factorization for this as well. And uh, yeah, let's see what that is. So I have b plus c and over here I have bc, right? So here I can write this as a times a plus b plus ac. I'm taking ac out of the bracket and remaining the rest as it is. So I'll get b plus c times, I'll take c common over here, I'll get a plus b plus a times a plus b 
is equal to zero. And now if you actually notice, this simplifies to b plus c times a plus b times a plus c is equal to zero. But essentially a plus b times b plus c plus c in times c plus a is equal to zero. So this is a very, very interesting result actually. And uh, so this is actually good to know. It's, it's just good to know thing that one by a plus b plus c minus one by a plus one by b plus one by c so this can be essentially transformed into a plus b times uh, a plus c times b plus c right a plus b b plus c times c plus a this can be easily transformed and this is actually a very important result to know so next time whenever you see a number theory problem or an algebra problem that involves something similar to this this is a result that you can actually know and you can actually prove that as well so uh, this is a quite a neat thing to have but coming back onto the problem so we have this, this statement over here that a plus b, b plus c, c plus a is equal to zero. So um, here you can essentially divide into three cases so that a plus b is equal to zero or b plus c is equal to zero or c plus c is equal to zero or a combination of these might be zero. Anything is possible. And uh, what we need to find, we need to find the value of one by a to the power 2023 plus one by b to the power 2023 plus one by c to the power 2023 given that a plus b plus c is zero. So no matter which two of these are zero, any two of these, it does not matter. For example, let's consider a C plus A is equal to zero. Let's consider that is zero. So C plus A, this is 2022 actually. Really sorry about that. So C plus A is equal to zero. So B becomes 2022, right? If A plus B was zero, then C would become 2022. If B plus C was zero, then A would become 2022. But it really does not matter. It really does not matter, okay? Let's just consider one of the cases where uh, C plus A is zero. Right, so essentially c is equal to negative a right c plus a is zero we are considering this possibility without loss of generality all it's symmetric so it does not matter what you take so you get b is equal to 2022 and what would uh, the value of the answer be 1 by a is power 2023 plus 1 by b is power 2023 plus 1 by c is power 2023 now you actually see because c is negative z is equal to negative a if i raise this to the 2023rd power this will be negative of a is power 2023 so essentially 1 by c to the power 2023 is equal to negative 1 by a to the power 2023 and uh, 1 by c to the power 2023 plus 1 by a to the power 2023 would also be 0. So effectively this thing plus this thing is 0. So what you would be left with is 1 by b to the power 2023. The answer would be 1 by 2022 raised to the power 2023. Right? That's the correct answer and uh, like I said the expression is quite symmetric. Right? So it really doesn't matter what, what value you take over here. You could have uh, done a similar process for b plus c is equal to zero, and then again a b plus c is equal to zero, so you'd get a is equal to 2022, and the answer would again be one by 2022 raised to 2023. So effectively, the answer would be same uh, without loss of generality. You can take um, any any pair or any like uh, value which you want, and you'd get the same result. So yeah, that was a really neat factorization, and now that you know it, it's good to keep that in mind for uh, for the usage in other problems. Okay, so we have certain book suggestions for uh, National Math Olympiads. We have Elementary Number Theory by David Burton, Principles and Techniques in Combinatrix, Problem Solving Strategies by Arthur and Jell, Functional Equations by Venkatachala, Problems in Plane Geometry by Sharikin, and Elementary Number Theory by Siapinski. Okay, so after this, we have a similar but challenging problem. And I want to find out what the value of a raised power 6 plus b raised power 6 plus c raised power 6, given that a, comma b, comma c satisfy the given system of equations. And uh, there are like a lot of ways to do this. This is uh, this is a relatively famous problem. One of the methods is actually Newton sums. Uh, I don't know how many of you know this, but it's actually a really nice method that can be used to uh, figure out sums of these sort. And another thing that may be used is just brute force algebra, brute force factorization, or brute force use of algebraic identities, and uh, that should also give you an answer. But uh, yeah, it's, it's actually really interesting, and you should spend a little bit of time trying to figure out how this would work. And uh, yeah, keep in mind that this the answer is an integer, okay? The answer is an integer. It's not like you don't have to find this in the form of, or in terms of a comma b comma c, you know, the answer has to be an integer, right? So if you're able to make any progress on it, or if you're able to solve it, let me in the comment section below. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much, bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads.
from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.